Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. As we've alhamdulillah near the halfway point for Ramadan, we want to bring in another tip to better help us with this Ramadan so that we can make the most of it. And so today's tip is going to focus on the subject of belching or what's otherwise known as burping. And in case you don't know what that is, it's kind of the chorus that you hear while the Quran is being recited of people going burp, 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 and all sorts of other different gross sounds as we're trying to focus on the words of Allah Rabbul Alameen. Now when we think about burping, interestingly there's actually a hadith from the Prophet والسلام, that focuses on this topic. It is a hadith collected by both Imam Al-Tirmidhi and Ibn Majah and this narration is from Ibn Majah and it's narrated to us by Abdullah ibn Umar May Allah be pleased with him and his father قَالَ تَجَشَّأَ رَجُلٌ عِنْدَ النَّبِيِّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ That a man burped in the presence of the Prophet صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ فَقَالَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ كُفَّ جُشَاءَكَ عَنَّا He told this man, spare us from your burping. Don't burp in front of us. And then the Prophet والسلام, he gave some advice to better help prevent this issue of burping. Now before I go on to the advice of what he gave us sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, I want us to think a little bit about burping and understand that burping is disgusting. It is gross. The sound itself is one thing. But then you have the odors that make it even worse. When you think about the combination of and then smelling garlic, smelling onion, smelling tobacco, smelling who knows what of the different medleys of food that people have eaten. And then instead of them trying to blow it into their jacket or you know away from the people they end up blowing it forward thinking they're doing a service by spreading that disgusting aroma to the people in front of them or to the left and to the right causing you to hold your breath doing your best to not pass out in the meanwhile thinking about how in the world am I going to get through this because sometimes these burps are so disgusting you feel it penetrating up into your brain as though your brain is going to start melting and oozing out from your nostrils that you can feel your lungs burning that these burps are sometimes so potent and so dangerous that they can qualify for chemical warfare and these odors, it's not just that you have a sound that's coming out of the throat but sometimes these burps can come deep, they can come from the belly where there's been some time for whatever it is that the person has ingested to come out. But the worst of those are the ones that come from the colon, deep from within the intestines. And if you think about what these burps are, really they're nothing different than a fart, flatulence. Except that instead of the disgusting sound and odor coming from the anus, they're coming from the mouth. And we know that, yes, in Islam that Farting breaks your wudu and that burping doesn't but nonetheless the disgustingness of both of them are such that in public we should do our best to save people from having to suffer from our breaking of wind and our burping. So the Prophet ﷺ's advice was فَإِنَّ أَكْثَرِكُمْ فَإِنَّ أَطْوَلِكُمْ He said وسلم, فَإِنَّ أَطْوَلِكُمْ جُوعًا يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَكْثَرِكُمْ شِبَعًا فِي دَارِ الدُّنْيَا He said Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the people who are going to be the most starved the longest starved in the hereafter are the people who in the life of this world they have filled their bellies the most so he's telling us that among the reasons for these burping is that we are overextending ourselves when it comes to what we're eating. When we break our fast brothers and sisters, we should not overdo it with the quantity, with the quantity of what we're packing down. And this is when we come to that beautiful guidance from the Prophet ﷺ when he tells us 
that there's nothing that a human being can feel worse than their bellies. And this is why he taught us Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that we should look to eat in a way that one third of our belly is food, another third is our drink, and the other third to remain empty. And if we do this by Allah's will and blessings, these horrific acts in public will become much less in quantity, much less in intensity, and much less in frequency. And in doing so, all of us can better enjoy this public time within these very compacted, filled spaces by worshipping Allah with greater focus and quality by having less of these horrific sounds and disgusting odors to distract us and to confuse us and to take us out of our worship. And I pray that Allah bless us to be from those who when we hear advice we take it to heart and do our best to imply it, to implement it in the most beautiful way. Allahumma ameen. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته